I'm literally just filming on my floor right now. I can't believe I'm making this video. What's up everybody, it's Shannon Renee, and today I'm bringing you a something a little bit different. I've not done this on my channel yet, so if you guys want to let me know what you think, comment down below, and if you want me to make more of these, I will. If you want me to never make one again, that's fine, but I'm going to be doing a story time video for you guys today, <laughs> bringing you what it was like working at Chick-fil-A. And I know, I cannot believe I'm making this video, I can't believe I worked there. <sighs> okay, so let's just get right into it. I didn't love it. I sometimes didn't hate it. The people I worked with were great. They were awesome. Everyone was so nice. Um, in the beginning, we'll get to we'll we'll get to some tea. But in the beginning, everyone was super super nice, and they showed me the ropes. Um, Everyone that, I, that trained me was so nice, and I'm so thankful for everybody I met there. And I feel like I met, I made a couple new friends. I feel like we all connected. We worked there so much together during the summer that we just all bonded and connected like right away. That's kind of how work relationships work anyway. You kind of just connect and bond like that anyway. It was one of those jobs that um, you had a lot of work, a lot of coworkers that became your friends, and you guys talked a lot. And, Everybody joked around, it was kind of super just fun, it was kind of a chill job, but when you needed to work, they pushed you and pushed you and pushed you, and this was one of the most insane jobs I've ever had. I've worked at like a few jobs in the past, but this is the most like insane job I've had. Like insane where I've had to deal with like a million things at one time. It was all multitasking pretty much. There was nothing else. It was just multitasking. Everything was just a multitask. You were supposed to do this and this and this and you were supposed to be everywhere. And it was just, uh. And I just need to say this before we get any farther into the video. Um, I am in no way trying to bash Chick-fil-A. They are a great company. They've got insane, insane amount of people who want their food, like, all the time. Like, it's always busy. There's no breaks, nothing, like, you have, you never have, like, a break in the day where there's nobody. Like, there's always people ordering. It's a decent place to work. I mean, it's... Okay, so Chick-fil-A is independently owned and operated franchises, so it means that every single franchise and every single store is owned by a different person, so they can choose to, like, make the rules how they want and um, manage how they want and stuff like that. So there's kind of different rules for every Chick-fil-A that you work at. They're great to work for temporarily if you need, like, a job, like, right away. I got hired in, like two days, like, it's insane. Yeah, we'll get to that, but, um, if you need a job, like, right away, they're a really good option, because they're always hiring, they're always needing new people, and we'll get to that also. They're always super understaffed, so, also, they do not drug test, so I'm putting that out there for anybody who needs that information, they do not drug test. Anyway, I am not throwing any negative shade at Chick-fil-A whatsoever. They're a great company, they're obviously doing great things, they're out there selling some great fast food. Um, they gave us free food every day, which I loved. That was one of the great perks of the job. You get a free entree inside every single day you work. Um, and then 50% off after that, which is like mind blowing. That was at our Chick-fil-A. Like I don't work there anymore, but that was ours. But I don't know how it is around or across the board. Like it's different rules for every Chick-fil-A. Like I said, it's independently, independently owned and operated franchise. Yeah, I am in no way trying to bash them. I just want to share my experiences with you guys and what I experienced while working there at a franchise, at a store, in a very populated, busy area. What kind of what I experienced along the way. I only worked there about five months, but you, you kind of experience a lot when you work there full time as opposed to just part time because there was a lot of people who just worked part time but me and like a few other people worked full time during the summer and I actually got overtime and it was like my paychecks were so great but I was working every single day I was so tired when I got home all I wanted to do is sleep like that was how much they were to do like I feel like the pay scale where I was at was kind of fair. I feel like it could have been a couple dollars more for what I was doing, the work I was doing, but they have you pretty much do a lot of work. They want you to be a well-rounded, like, 
worker there like they call the workers team members they want you to be a well-rounded team member so they train you on everything so you're kind of just pulled from every other direction and that's one of the things i kind of hated like you didn't really get to pick where you wanted to be you were kind of just like thrown everywhere and expected to do everything and that's what i hated i hated that i can't i need to be like i need one task at a time i'm not like a multitask person whatsoever i'm like a very detail oriented creative I need to focus on one task at a time person, so that really didn't work out for me. So that was one of the reasons I didn't like working there. If you do like multitasking and a fast paced job, it's really good for that. And okay, so every store has an operator and then we had a senior manager type person who did like this, the scheduling and um, stuff like that. And then we had managers, like a ton of managers and senior leaders and um, trainers and team leaders and those were like the the next step up from team member I guess you would call it um, but they were like the trainers that train you um, like when you first start and stuff like that. I began working there at uh, the end of May and I worked there until let's see I worked there until the end of September so it was around five months? I would say around five months, uh, give or take, I mean, I don't know. Math, who cares? But, <laughs> and like, they gave me the hours I wanted and I'm really glad about that. Most jobs, like, don't give you the hours you want, but I worked pretty much 7.30 to four. Yeah, it was 7.30 to four and I liked it because I got to carpool with my boyfriend and we both got to work the same hours, we both got to be home at the same time. It was really nice and I'm glad they did that for me. They did that all summer and I'm glad. I'm glad they matched our schedule so that we could carpool and that was one of the things I asked when I first started and they were like, yeah, we will do that and they did and I'm glad that they kept that promise. Like I said, they paid decent. I mean, it's not like great pay, it's not like bleh. But um, you could be paid. You could be paid a couple more dollars for the work you do. I believe because you have to do so much at one time. Like they expect you to do like a lot of things at one time. Okay, so to get into the interesting stuff, now that I've done telling my story. Oh yeah, they interviewed me. This is the weird part. They interviewed me in the same day. I had two interviews and then I got the job in the same day. So I kind of pretty much got the job on the spot even though they called in it two interviews, two separate, I don't know. But um, afterwards they put me in training eight to five, Monday through Friday. The first week, Monday through Friday, eight to five, I was on an iPad sitting in the middle of the store. Oh yeah, and by the way, they interviewed me outside in the middle of the store where everybody could hear. So beware if you want to be interviewed at like a chain restaurant like that. If you want to be like, if you want to work there, they're going to probably interview you in front of everybody. So if you're like not comfortable with that, then I would consider like different types of work, like retail maybe. Because in retail, they have like offices. They don't really, they didn't really have an office at where I worked. The managers were just all out on the floor all the time. So that was kind of like different. Like I had never been interviewed in front of like everybody like in a store before. It was so like, I hated it. But anyway, after that I did weird iPad training for like, I think it was five days. I sat on that iPad for eight hours. Like I can't believe this now. Eight hours watching like, they weren't even relevant videos, they were just boring, like, make you want to fall asleep videos. And they made you, like, watch these videos before you could get on into the counter. Like, they made you. And I swear, I didn't learn a thing. I didn't learn a thing from that video training. Like, it was called E-Train, their program was called E-Train, and, like, I did not learn a thing from that. Um, so, I wish the training was more hands-on. The second week it was kind of hands-on because I was with a trainer, but they kind of threw a lot of information at you at once and you're expected to know a lot and be fast, like fast. Like you had to be really fast right away. If you weren't, then they were so mad at you. They would yell, like they had this little monitor screen and if it would get red, they would yell at you like so loud in front of everybody and they're like, why are you like that? Why are you And it's like, Oh my god, it's not my fault that we're like understaffed and we're too busy. But I will get into that too. Sorry, I'm just ranting about like my past job experiences right now. <laughs> it feels good. Hey, the video training was the worst thing ever. Um, I hate it.
hated it. I can't believe I stuck out that week. Like, I needed the money, I know that now, but like, now that I look back on it, I'm like, why did I not just look for another job? Like, I don't know. So after your first week on E-Train, they put you with a trainer, like in the cash register area, and you get to learn like the register and what it is. And like, it shows you pictures, so it's basically like self-explanatory. Like, why are you teaching me this? But then they throw you into the dining room where you clean and sweep because they don't want to deal with you. And then when they actually have a trainer there and need to train you again, they put you on window. They're stressful because you have to go super fast right away. And if you don't, they'll yell at you like it just said. They'll yell and be like, why is this on red? And you're just like, because people in line won't give me the money right away. I'm sorry. I can't rush somebody to give me money. Like, as a cashier, you can't do that. Like, you can't be like, like, no, you can't do that. And some people would give me like all quarters and change at the drive through window, and I'm like, okay, I'll just spend like five minutes counting this while you like wait for your seat, just sitting there on the counter, like, thanks. Like, I hate people who do that, like, give you like a lot of change. I know change is like annoying, but just go put it in one of those machines and like, and get dollar bills out, yo. Dollar dollar bills, yo. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's just one of my pet peeves. Anyway, that's another story about just being a cashier in general. I could go on all day because I've had so many experiences. I could tell stories. I could tell horror stories all day about my experiences here. Because I worked there all summer and it was insane. But um one of the horror stories. Okay, so one of the horror stories is in the summer it was always way too busy and so our drive through line was one day backed up so far we okay so we have our little franchise in this big shopping center and it's got like a par parking lot and a carpool line to go into the drive through so the, the carpool line in the street it goes out to the main street and there's a stoplight so at the stoplight there was people like backed up all the way to there and then past the stoplight all the way down the main street and they had to have they like cops came in and told them that they can't do that anymore and the cops had to redirect the traffic away from the store that's how bad it was like this is in kck where it's like not like i don't know <laughs> it's it's honestly not that busy, but Chick-fil-A is just like that in high demand like that. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to quit also is because they always are understaffed, always. And they became way more understaffed when I um, was about ready to quit, like right at the end of summer when everyone was changing their schedules because of school and stuff. Um, but they became way understaffed then and they've kind of acted like it was like the team members fault. Like, it's not our fault that we're, you're understaffed and you lost people. Like, you're supposed to find new people to replace them. Like, you know these seasons are coming and you know that it's like a temporary position so people change all the time so you should be prepared for that. But you were not and you're blaming us. But that's another whole story. But anyway, but anyway, I feel like Chick-fil-A is not prepared for how fast they're growing. I feel like they have grown way too fast for how they were prepared to grow. And also, I feel like at the end of the period, like at the end of the summer, like at that like weird two week period, it was like, there was really no like structure. Like there was always structure in the like summer, like all the, daytime managers have structure. There was no structure because this one new manager like had no idea how to run, how to, no idea how to be a manager, no idea how to manage. Like, okay, so this one manager, one night, I was working in the evening. Um, I had an eight hour shift that day. So I was hungry, I hadn't eaten dinner, I was tired, I was like, oh, I'm so ready for this break, and I, st I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. I was working on window that night, so I kept waiting, and then she started sending people on breaks, and um, I kept waiting, and I was like, am I going to get a break? Like, in my head, I was like, am I going to get a break? I haven't had one yet, and I'm starving, and then she sends everyone on break except for me. She totally skipped me. And then at the end of the night, when my shift was over, she goes, you didn't have a break, did you? I was like, no. 
and she was like, I don't know, and she starts apologizing, and like, I couldn't tell if it was genuine or not, probably not, but I'm like, it's okay, I don't really care, I'm just kind of hungry, and she's like, here, take these nuggets, and she gave me nuggets, um, but, and then she was like, that's not how we run things here, and I'm like, obviously it is, because you just did it, but okay, um, <laughs> But after that, I was just kind of basically fed up. Like, if you're a manager, you're supposed to be on that stuff. You're supposed to have that stuff figured out before, like, that night. And even then, like, fair to blame the team members and the lowest people out, like, in your franchise to blame them for something that your scheduling people and human resource people were supposed to deal with months ago. Like, that's not our problem, that's their problem. You should be mad at them, not us. It's not our fault, we're just trying to sit there and do our jobs, and you take it out on us, take breaks away from us, cut our breaks down. And then shortly after that, I gave my two weeks, and <laughs> I just didn't think I was being treated that fairly, um, as a, like, lowest, on the lowest total pole employee, like, just a team member working at a temporary job, like, I wasn't being treated I feel like. Um, anyway, some of the good things about Chick-fil-A is that where I worked, you got a free entree inside every day. You got a limited free drink, so I got lemonade all the time for free. Bless. Their lemonade is best, but um, I got that all the time for free. And um, you got 50% off after that. So anything you order after that meal, you get 50% off. So I ordered so much food, like... The breakfast too, like that was my favorite part, was getting the, the chicken minis and the burrito. Those were the two best things on the menu. Like they're the only breakfast items, you can only get them during breakfast, but they're the two best things on the menu. Like, and that was another good thing about working there is I didn't know that they had those and I tried them and I'm like, these are really good. So it made me like their breakfast even more than their lunch. Like I like their nuggets, but then I like their breakfast even more now. <laughs> But anyway, so that is about it for my story time video. I hope you guys liked it. Um, it's something different, like, I don't know, I just kind of feel like sitting, felt like sitting down in front of the camera talking to you guys about, like, past job experiences that, that I've had and, like, working in minimum wage, like, jobs and, like, temporary part-time positions and stuff like that. So if you guys want to see more of that, smash the like button. Alright, well that's about it for the story time. I hope you guys liked this video. It was a different video that I've, than I've ever done before. Um, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below. I have a whole bunch of crazy stories I can tell you guys, so every week I can do just a sit down story time if you guys want. So let me know if I should do that. Um, also subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. Thank you for the support. And I hope you liked the video. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye!